We're in Newton 338. It's getting pretty late up in this place. We're gonna talk about art, and are you ready to start? Go! Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Shaq. So, Shaq, who's your favorite artist? Hmm, that's a hard on. I mean, a hard one. <clears throat> yeah, my favorite artist would be Thomas Cole. Thomas Cole? Who the heck is that? I'm glad you asked, my friend. Thomas Cole was an English-born American artist. You might also know him as the guy that founded the Hudson, Hudson River, River School. School. Oh, yeah. I remember him. Yeah, Isn't that's he the guy. famous for his realistic and detailed portrayal of American landscape and wilderness? That's the one. Oh, nice. He also featured themes like romanticism and naturalism. Oh, okay. So what's your favorite painting of his? He has so many great ones, like the Garden of Eden and Niagara Falls and the Course of the Empire. But I'd have to say my favorite is the Oxbow. Ooh, why? Well, the painting is kind of sublime. It has this kind of dark, scary, eerie feel to it on the left. Mm. And on the right, it's kind of like peaceful and happy, you know what I mean? I see it, I see it. Here Cole is faced with a split. One of untamed wilderness and one of a peaceful land cultivated by a man. It's kind of ironic because the painters that came out of the Hudson River School would merge two peaceful or two wild images. Cole never really did that. He was never afraid of showing how two opposites could look beautiful together. I noticed that thunderstorm on the left. What does it mean? Well, Josh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. The thunderstorm on the left could mean uncontrolled power of nature, but also the sublimity of its power. Cole doesn't hold back in showing the recession of wilderness from this piece. Did you even notice the little guy in the bottom left-hand corner? Whoa, I didn't even see him. Who is that? That, my friend, is Thomas Cole. Whoa! So, anyways, the soft greens and yellows and the gentle rolling landscape of the farm suggest that the pastoral civilization that replaces the wilderness is as beautiful in its order as nature is in its sublimity. Wow. That was deep. I know. What about you, Josh? Who's your favorite artist? Well, that's a toughie, but I've got to say Duchamp. Duchamp? Yeah, Marcel Duchamp. His early works were aligned with the post-impressionistic styles. He also experimented with classical techniques and other ones such as cubism and fauvism. But we're going to focus on his ready-made art. What does ready-made art look like? Well, the one I'm going to show you looks like this. Ew, that looks disgusting. This is what they consider art nowadays? Well... This work was called The Fountain, and yes, it made me a bit mad when I first saw it too. But the art doesn't lie within the object itself. It lies within the idea behind it. Wait, what do you mean? Well, he took objects out of our daily lives, such as this urinal, put his name on it, and tried to set it out on display. People from museums would actually put this crap on display? Talk about a shitty piece of art. This work was submitted for the exhibition of the Society of Independent Artists in 1912, and the fountain was rejected by the committee, even though the rules stated that all works would be accepted from artists who paid a fee. Good, because this is really pissing me off. He was trying to contradict what the meaning of art truly was. The fact that this was eventually considered a piece of art and was out on display was what he was trying to accomplish. He was trying to make artists think deeper about what they considered to be art. Basically, anti-art. Oh, okay. So he wanted us to question what we consider to be art, right? Exactly. Oh, well, I think I have a deeper connection to this piece. Glad to hear it, buddy. In an interview with Catherine Kuh in 1961, Marcel Duchamp, when asked about his ready-mades, let it be known that the concept behind those objects might be the single most important idea to come out of his work. He elaborated on this concept of his ready-made by saying, ultimately, it should not be looked at. It's not the visual aspect of the ready-made that matters. It's simply the fact that it exists. Visuality is no longer a question. The ready-made is no longer visible, so to speak. It is completely gray matter. It is no longer retinal. Oh, okay, thanks. That makes sense now. We're at the end of this show. Told you the art that we know. Bye!